Hey, what's going on you guys? My name's Isaac. I am a pharmacy student at U of T and this is part two of my video series on treatments for male pattern hair loss. In part one, I talked about two of the most common treatments for male pattern hair loss, which are finasteride and minoxidil. And we really broke these treatments down in terms of efficacy, safety, cost, and convenience. Part two is gonna focus a little bit more on the efficacy side of things, more specifically, if you really didn't care about practical aspects aspects and you really just wanted to go for the best results possible, which treatment or combination of treatments would yield the best results. Now you see these people online who are paying hundreds of dollars every month on these complex assortment of natural health products, prescription drugs, and experimental research chemicals. And while I applaud these individuals for taking their hair into their own hands and really pioneering the future of hair care regimens, you need to understand that these types of hair loss regimens are not supported by the most scientific evidence and the current literature suggests that you can achieve the best results with far fewer treatments and much more money in your bank account. So today I'm going to be talking about one of the more popular treatment combinations. We're going to be going over combining finasteride with minoxidil. What kind of results can you get with this combination? And in the future, I'll be making a video about dutasteride, the more potent older brother of finasteride. And then I'll also be talking about derma rolling with topical minoxidil, since that seems to be a hot topic right now. As always, I hope that you find this video to be informative. I hope you learned something new, but most importantly, I hope this video helps you make a better decision about your hair loss regimen and really helps to optimize the results you get from your hair loss protocol. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's get down to business. Let's talk about mixing finasteride with minoxidil. What kind of re results can you expect with this type of treatment regimen and what is shown in the literature? Well, first of all, as I mentioned in my previous video, these are two drugs that work through different mechanisms of action, finasteride being a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. That's a drug that helps to prevent the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which as we already know, is the main culprit in male pattern hair loss. On the other hand, we have minoxidil, which is a vasodilator. That's a drug which helps to widen blood vessels and increase blood flow. Um, some people believe that it helps to increase hair growth by increasing blood flow to the scalp, but new research shows that we don't really know what the mechanism of action of, um, of minoxidil really is. It could be something else, but it's probably different than finasteride. So these are two drugs. They work through different mechanisms of action. In theory, that means that together they should should work better than either agent on its own. Is this true in the real world? Do we see this in studies? Let's take a look at that right now. The first study that I want to bring your attention to was done by Hu and colleagues. Um, the authors took 450 Chinese patients and they divided them into three different groups. We had a finasteride group, a minoxidil group, and a combination group. Um, the authors looked at hair growth or they looked at the efficacy of treatment by global photographic assessment and what that is they pretty much took pictures of the participants hair um, they did this at baseline and every three months for a year these pictures were assessed by two different dermatologists um, these dermatologists were blinded to treatment allocation so they didn't uh, know which participant was in which group just another way to help to reduce some bias and then the dermatologists ranked participants on a scale in terms of hair growth from greatly increased to greatly decreased so let's look at the results right now the authors reported improvements in 59%, 80.5%, and a staggering 94.1% of men that used minoxidil, finasteride, or the combination respectively. I've kind of made an Excel graph to help to illustrate these results. In this Excel graph, you can see that I go into this, that I show the results in a little bit more detail. We've got the hair scores on the Y axis from greatly increased to slightly decreased. And then we've also got the percent of men in each group on the Y axis. Um, we've got, you can see over here, I've got the three groups in different colors. We have the combination group in green, the finasteride group in red, and the minoxidil group in blue. And you can see pretty clearly that the combination group by 
far has the best results. You've got these big strong bars on in the greatly increased and the moderately increased categories, um, followed by finasteride, which is okay, and then minoxidil in last place. Um, the one thing about this study is that they didn't include a placebo group. That's a group that didn't use any treatment at all. But remember what we know about the natural progression of male pattern hair loss. Um, we can kind of uh, we can kind of guess that the placebo group might be in some of the categories to the right. There's some other interesting trends that the authors noted. Um, one had to do with how quickly it took for the treatments to start working. So they looked at the onset of treatment efficacy at three months. What they found was there was a tie between the finasteride group and the minoxidil group. So these two treatments both took about the same time to start working. At three months, about 39% of men in both of these groups had at least some hair growth. On the other hand, we had the combination group, which did a lot better at three months. About 54% of men in this group did experience at least some hair growth. So a pretty big improvement in terms of onset. They also looked at scalp regions. Did men in any of these treatment groups experience more growth in different regions of their scalp? And what they found was that in the finasteride group, it looked like there was a little bit more hair growth on the vertex and on the anterior of the scalp compared to the front of the scalp. So a little bit more growth in the middle and back parts of the head compared to the front of the head. Um, they didn't really find this trend in the other two groups where hair growth seemed to be consistent all the different regions of the scalp. The last trend that they noticed was that in the finasteride group, it seemed like younger men experienced better results than older men. Authors kind of hypothesized that this could be because younger men tend to have higher testosterone than older men, and by consequence, they tend to have higher DHT than older men. So younger men might derive a little bit more benefit from this DHT blocking of the finasteride compared to older men. The authors also took a look at side effects in this study and they found what they found in terms of side effects is pretty consistent with what we already know is in the literature. Um, the finasteride group, about 1.8% of men had side effects. Most of these were sexual in nature, you know, nothing unexpected here. And then in the minoxidil group, about 6.1% of men experienced side effects. And most of the, these were dermatological in nature, um, skin irritation, rashes, these types of things. Again, nothing surprising here. Okay, so those were the results from Hu and colleagues. I just want to bring your attention to one more interesting study. This one was done by Kandapur and colleagues. And what they did is they took 100 men and they divided them into four different groups. Again, we had a finasteride group, we had a minoxidil group, we had a combination group, but then there was a fourth group that was a combination of finasteride and ketoconazole shampoo. And what is ketoconazole? Well, ketoconazole is a type of anti-dandruff shampoo. Um, it may have some, it's thought to have some kind of benefits for treating male pattern hair loss but really this is a topic for another video so i'm not going to go into this in too much depth anyways moving on um, again they measured the efficacy of the treatment by global photographic assessment that's those pictures that are taken however in this case they had assessment of results by the patients themselves so they had a self-assessment and then they also had an assessment by a panel of three dermatologists so in terms of results, one year following treatment start from the self-assessment, we saw better results in the two combination groups and also in the finasteride group compared to the minoxidil group by itself. Um, the data was kind of messy, so all we can really say is that those three groups were better than the minoxidil group, but we couldn't really decipher anything past that. The results from the dermatologist group was a little bit cleaner and we could draw some better results from that. Of these men, they reported men that had any improvements included 87% of those in the finasteride group, 100% of those in the finasteride minoxidil combination group, only 42% of those in the minoxidil group, so really the minoxidil group didn't perform very well here, and then 100% of those in the finasteride ketoconazole group. Um, and then the dermatologists reported men that had moderate to excellent improvements. So these are the men that got really great results from the treatments. Over here, we saw 33% of those in the finasteride group. So really the finasteride group was kind of mediocre in this category, I would say. 72% um, of those in the finasteride minoxidil group, 8% of those in the minoxidil group. So really the minoxidil group didn't perform well here. And then 80% of those in the finasteride ketoconazole group. So some concerns I had with the study right off the bat, 
the finasteride ketoconazole group, they only had 10 study participants. So really, um, this sample size is pretty small. I, I don't think we can really draw any conclusions from this data. But yeah, so that was one concern. Another concern I had was that like the previous study, there wasn't a placebo group. So that's there. And then my last concern is that it wasn't really clear if the dermatologists were blinded to treatment allocation. So obviously the patients doing the self-assessment, they would have known which groups they were in, but it's not clear if the dermatologists knew which group the patients were in. It may have been a source of bias over here. So the authors also reported side effects in this study. Again, they're pretty consistent with the literature. They had one man in the finasteride group who reported loss of libido at three months, but the man decided to continue taking finasteride and he actually found his libido returned to normal. Um, there was another man in the minoxidil group who reported low blood pressure. So again, nothing surprising here. Anyways, those are two of the largest and most reputable studies I could find on the subject of combining finasteride and minoxidil for male pattern hair loss and how those results compare to either treatment on its own. If you can find any other studies on this subject, please link it in the comments below or really if you have any thoughts or feelings on the topic of combination therapy for male pattern hair loss, feel free to link it in the comment below. Your comments always generate an excellent dialogue, an excellent and interesting dialogue, which I always love to participate in, and I'm sure a lot of people do as well. As I mentioned before, I do plan to make more videos on this topic. The next thing I want to explore is probably going to be dutasteride. Uh, you know, what kind of differences in the mechanism of action does it have compared to finasteride that makes it so, so potent? And then I'll also be talking about derma rolling in combination with minoxidil. So again, thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it interesting and entertaining, and I look forward to seeing you in the future.